E911 gets major accreditation, keeping things from being stolen from your car and December fun at the library. Welcome to Lexington Now for December 9th, 2019. I'm your host, Neil Noah. Lexington's Enhanced 911 Center has become the first in Kentucky to receive accreditation from the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, or CALEA, the highest such agency in the nation. E911 Director Robert Stack fills us in on what that means. Lexington undertook the accreditation process three years ago through CALEA, which stands for the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. Uh, they've developed a body of standards in conjunction with the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials International, or APCO, and these are the highest standards for public safety telecommunications in the country. Our reasons for doing so is so that we could uh, be the best possible 911 center that we could be. And we knew that we needed to look at a set of outside body of standards to measure against, and CALEA provided that opportunity. We had to become compliant with 213 standards, um, which initially required a phase called the self-assessment phase. And so we successfully completed uh, that phase, which required us to um, develop uh, some policies and procedures for the agency that were conducive with the way that we do things here in Lexington. Um, and we were able to do that. And after submitting uh, the policies and procedures and um, letting our employees know about the policy and procedure changes um, and working within the policies and procedures, of course, to make sure that they were uh, doable. For example, if we have a policy uh, that, uh, or if we, there's a standard that requires us to have an organizational chart. And in that standard, we're required to keep it up to date and we're required to publish it out to our employees so they can look at it at any time. So, for example, it's on the wall behind you. It's on the computers that each of our workers has in front of them. So the purpose of that standard is not only do you understand the, how the whole organization fits together, but you can see that you're a chain of command. So a, a call taker knows which supervisor they report to, who that supervisor's manager is, and where they fall in that chain leading up to my position. We were pretty well on our way. There wasn't a lot of changes that need, needed to be made necessarily, just some tweaking, um, just showing. We were already doing most of um, the standards. However, proving that we're doing the standards and showing the documentation um, to prove that we're actually doing that. And so from here on out, that is um, what we will have to continue to do in order to remain uh, accredited. You know, I'm very proud of our organization because this was, although it's a highly administrative process, it required a lot of change for our people. And I think our people really got into this together and accepted the fact that we needed to be the best we could. Um, and they've adapted to all these changes and we, we really hit them with a lot of changes in a short period of time. And that's hard on the employee and I recognize that. So I admire them and their ability to adapt. And then also for Ms. Patton for her ability to take a leadership role in this process and bring it to a successful conclusion. That's, that's awesome. You know, it means a lot for us um, here in Lexington just to be an example for other agencies that they can actually do the same thing. It's all about accountability. Um, you know, you have to have checks and balances uh, in order to know uh, that you're on the right track. And hey, when you see yourself getting off the right track, you know um, how to get back on the right track by following the standards that are set in place for you. A lot of our practices have been fine-tuned and honed so that uh, the public should uh, realize better service, but also our employees should appreciate better administrative practices that are going on within the agency as a result of going through this process. The holiday season is one filled with laughter and fun, but it can also be a time for thieves to take advantage of theft opportunities. The Lexington Police Department has a musical message to help you prevent becoming a victim of stolen things.
cash in my wallet and credit cards too. My driver's license and change that was loose. A leather purse hidden under my seat. These are a few of my stolen things. Cell phones and laptops and iPads and Kindles. Expensive cameras and a box of tools. Shiny gold jewelry like my wedding ring. These are a few of my stolen things. Rifles and handguns and sharp pointy knives. Clothing and shoes and glasses for my eyes. Musical instruments, my guitar strings. These are a few of my stolen things. If the thieves come checking handles in my neighborhood, I simply remember my stolen things and to always lock my doors. Happy holidays from the Lexington Police Department. Don't let your favorite things become your stolen things. Please never leave valuables in your car and always remember to lock your doors. We learn not to ever keep stuff in our trucks and in cars. We simply remember our stolen things and to always lock our doors. When we come back, there's lots of fun to be had at the Public Library in December. In Lexington, we help our neighbors. This year, our city has experienced six fire fatalities. The most vulnerable groups are children and the elderly. Smoke alarms are your best defense in a house fire. You can help your neighbor by donating to the Lexington Fire Department's Smoke Alarm Program. Together, we can make Lexington an even safer place to live. To Lexington now. December is a busy time for the Lexington Public Library and Children's Librarian Whitney Johnson runs down some of the big events coming up this month. We have the Downtown Lexington Christmas Parade will be on Saturday, December 7th. 
and the library likes to support the families and kind of engage those who are coming downtown for the parade. So that morning um, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. we will have hot cocoa and cookies for families who are there attending the parade. So that's just something kind of fun to pop into Central while you're already downtown. Um, in addition, we have a very special guest will be here on Thursday, December 19th at 11 a.m. for our preschool story time, and that is Mr. Santa Claus himself. He will be here um, to share a story called The Magic of the North Pole. Um, he'll be here for about 45 minutes and then um, be engaging with families after to take photos and um, maybe get Christmas lists from the kids as well. Um, and we'll also have hot cocoa and cookies for that story time also. And um, we're also looking forward to on Monday, December 16th, will be our baby sensory time. And the theme is Jingle Bell Baby. So we'll have lots of engaging programs um, for those young zero to 18 month babies. Um, just fun things to get on the floor, to play with your child um, and, and encourage them through those sensory learning activities. Yeah, so if you want more information, um, definitely check out our website, lexpublib.org. We have a calendar of events there where you'll find the um, information for the programs happen happening at Central and also all our other locations as well. Um, and our Facebook page also has the most up-to-date um, program and events as well. Always a fun time of the year. Lex Park's annual Food for Fines drive continues until next week and it's a great opportunity to help needy families and erase a few fines along the way. Gary Means fills us in on the details. Food for Fines starts on Monday, November the 25th and runs for four weeks until Friday, December the 20th. Food for Fines is now in its um, sixth year and we're super excited to run it again. It started uh, with, with an idea of uh, coming from our staff, should we do, we had heard of Toys for Tickets and then we'd also heard of Food for Fines. One other city, I think it was Boston, did Toys for Tickets. Some universities were doing Food for Fines back then, but there wasn't a lot of examples of it. So it was kind of a, something we thought we'd try out for a year and it was a huge success and we've continued to do it every year. The way it works is you bring in 10 cans and that'll get you $15 off any citation that you have. Even if you have multiples of citations, you can bring in tons of cans. So we've had um, tremendous success each year. We average about 8,000 items donated each year, but we've collected nearly 18 tons of food, which amounts to about 30,000 meals. We work with God's Pantry, and that's uh, what they reported to us, but um, it, yeah, it's been super successful. You can go on our website and then look, and that is uh, lexpark.org, and then look a pay a citation click on that it doesn't mean you're gonna to have to pay anything but if you put in your license plate or maybe your name and address but try your license plate of any vehicles you've had or owned in the last couple of years and that'll pull up any citations that you might have um, I always like to say this this food for fines program is like a perfect storm nobody likes to get a ticket but people like to help people and some people have a lot of tickets and so we've had a couple come in uh, one time there was like I think it was like a boyfriend and girlfriend and they had these two huge uh, Kroger bags full of, of uh, well, I think one of them had like six citations, the other one had two, but they were paying off eight total. We've had somebody bring in a suitcase full of uh, cans. And so we've also gone out and helped people get it out of their trunk. We'll do that. We've got a dolly and you can holler at us and we'll uh, go out there and help you bring in all your cans. So the program takes place at the Lex Park office located at 122 North Broadway and they are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Council is on winter break, but there are still several meetings on our televised schedule this week. Here's Chris Edwards to fill us in on a few of the items to look for. Thanks, Neil. Bearby County Council has wrapped up its business for 2019 and now takes a much-deserved winter break. The council will return to business on January 14, 2020. Rest assured, however, just because the council is not having any regular meetings, the council members are still very hard at work representing their respective districts. This week's meeting schedule began on Monday with the Board of Adjustment meeting at 1.30 p.m. Since the council is out, there are no meetings for this Tuesday. So the next meeting we have is the Police and Fire Pension Board meeting Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Also on Wednesday is the 5 p.m. Board of Architecture Review meeting. Because of the holiday, this is the only BOAR meeting we have for the month of December. And now with the addition of Pensacola Park as a historic overlay district, we can expect maybe some more items on these agendas. 
The final meeting for this week is the Thursday 1.30 p.m. Planning Commission meeting. This week's agenda items are about subdivisions. That's all the meetings we have for this week. You can always catch these meetings live here on Lex TV channel 185 or web stream at the city's website at lexingtonky.gov forward slash Lex TV. Neil, back to you. Thanks, Chris, for the information. And that's all for this week. But as always, you can keep up with us on social media. Check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it. 